This is our L298 compact motor driver. We're going to use it to control the motors on our little Bitsy bot. We're going to control those hair dryer motors speed and direction using this guy. It's going to allow us to switch the high voltage we need for the motor and the high current with our low voltage and low current from our microcontroller, which is called the Arduino. So the Arduino here has a bunch of different pinouts. We can use those to connect to uh, the motor controller and control the motor. It also has a USB cord that we can plug in, or a USB socket we can plug into our computer so we can program it to tell the motor controller what to do. So the motor we're going to use is this guy. It's a uh, basic a hair dryer motor and it is going to be used as our wheels on the Bitsy bot and so it'll allow us to drive around and, and do all kinds of things um, and the motor controller allows us to control two of these uh, so that's one of the reasons we selected it we also chose it because it was a kit so to get started we need to use a rosin core so we're using a rosin core 6040 solder and uh, that the rosin core allows it to stick a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is select our resistors for our L298 chip. And uh, the resistors are going to be, uh, those first resistor are 47K ohm resistors. And you can tell they're 47K ohm because like all resistors, they have stripes on them that indicate what their resistance level is. So uh, these particular ones are yellow, purple, orange, and gold. And so we put the LED, or we put the, I should say, the resistors in, and we've bent their leads so that the resistors stay snug against the board. And we're going to heat the solder pad that the resistors lead goes through. So it, so it takes a little while to get the hang of it, but we're just uh, heating the, the soldering pads uh, that the lead is going through and uh, trying to uh, make sure that they get just enough solder to uh, wick all the way around the lead and uh, make a clean connection. Sometimes it's it's tough to get the uh, the point of the soldering iron just right so that you can get the the heat on the on the pad but we'll get it there and uh, it's important to keep the tip of the soldering iron clean. So now we're ex inspecting the connections to make sure that they are solid and that our components are where they should be on the board. And you can see that the solder has flowed through and is, is a, there's a good connection on each of the, of the uh, resistors. So uh, we're going to go ahead and trim off those leads. We'll use a nipper pliers. And you want to trim them as close to the board as you possibly can. Uh, you still want to, of, of course, leave the, uh, the solder connection intact. All right, so... Now we're going to install our next two resistors, and we'll do these a little bit more quickly because you've already seen how we connect resistors. Uh, these resistors are 2.2K ohm resistors, and they are used to protect our indicator LEDs. You can see them in the top of the screen there, the, the green and the red ones. And uh, these are uh, indicated, you can tell they're 2.2K because they're red, 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 and gold. And so we just splayed the leads of the resistors there so we could hold them in place. And then, of course, we soldered them down. And those resistors are put in place vertically instead of uh, horizontally because there's not as much space. All right, so now we're going to install our flyback diodes. These diodes are going to protect our circuit from a uh, current that could come back from the motors. Uh, these diodes are the same types of diodes that you would use in, say, a bridge, re bridge rectifier. Uh, they, uh, <coughs> it's important that they're installed in a particular way. So you can see there's a little square, uh, at the, uh, underneath the, uh, or on the right hand side of the diode marking. And that square shows that you should line up the silver stripe on the diode with that square. So the silver stripes should face the outside, should be closest to the outside of the board. And that means that the diodes are in the correct location. Uh, and as we know, diodes function like valves, and they only allow the electricity to flow in one direction, so it is important that they're installed in the correct way. You can see how the, the, that diode's not sitting quite flat, so I'm going to take my pliers and uh, push it in the rest of the way. It's important that the components on the board sit flush. So then we'll just bend the leads out like we did with the other components and uh, make sure they're all lined up appropriately. And it's important, again, to keep the leads away from each other so you don't want them to be touching when you uh, solder them down. And uh, so we're just verifying that the leads are there and that the diodes are flush against the board, and they are. And so we'll solder them in place and then add the other uh, six diodes that are required for protecting our board. So we've got those in place, and they're all soldered down, and we soldered each of the pads. 
And so now we're just going to trim off the leads. And again, you want to make sure that the solder pads don't connect to, to each other. They should stay separate. Uh, anyway, uh, we're verifying now that the solder joints look pretty good and the components are in the right orientation. And they are. So you can see how they're connected and how the solder has flowed around all of the leads and that none of the solder joints are touching. Okay, so now we're going to install a uh, filtering capacitor. This is a high-frequency filtering capacitor. It's uh, 0.1 microfarads, um, and it's bipolar, which means it can be installed either direction. It's not like the uh, diodes that, that care which way they go. And uh, so we're going to bend the leads out here on this, and again, we'll just heat up those solder pads and solder right to the pads. Now, it's, uh, the pads are close on that one, so you've got to be careful not to use too much solder, and we'll trim the leads off. So now we are going to install our light-emitting diodes. Uh, these light-emitting diodes are going to allow us to see what direction the motor is turning, what direction the current is flowing. All right, so these indicator diodes are very important. It's very important that they're installed in the correct way. So they have a long lead and a short lead, and the short lead needs to go uh, to, towards the square pad or through the square pad. And there's also a flat side on the diode that uh, will line up with the flat side on the opposite diode. And um, that's how you know that you have the diodes in, in the correct orientation. And they will also sit completely flat on the board, as you can see right there, when they're in correctly. So just make sure those two short leads are facing one another and that they go through the, uh, the square pads that are in the center. So again, we're going to bend those leads out, and that just holds the diodes flat while we solder them in place. Okay, now that we've got the diodes in, we're going to connect our interface socket strips. These uh, basically allow us to easily connect wires from our Arduino to the motor controller, and uh, they allow a little place for us to plug the wire in. So we're going to tape these down because they're not easy to hold in place. Their leads aren't long enough to bend. And uh, then we're going to set them on the, on the um, pliers to hold them in place, and then we'll just solder them down. So uh, now the next step is to connect our terminal blocks. So the terminal blocks will, connect, uh, will allow us to connect our motors right to the um, L298 controller board and uh, will also provide us a place to uh, get power from the board to power other components. So we've got a, a place to do that. So here's, our, here's where we wire our battery. That's our three terminal block. And then our motors are wired on the two terminal blocks. And again, we're taping those down just to make sure they sit flush because they tend have a tendency to sort of fall out of the board when you're soldering them in place. Here's an electrolytic capacitor. So now we're going to install our 22 microfarad 50-volt uh, capacitor. This is an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, it has a, uh, it has the, the, the round pad needs to be uh, connected with the positive, uh, which is the longer capacitor lead. It is, it is uh, polarized. And now we have our 5-volt regulator. This is going to allow us to get 5 volts from the board. And we just pushed it through, and we're soldering the pads down. And uh, that 5-volt re regulator will allow us to use some of the power from the board to power our Arduino. Um, and so now we've got a uh, our L298 chip, which is the logic chip on the board. And the L298 chip uh, does all of the uh, – it, it takes the sig – it interprets the sig signals from the Arduino and allows the uh, power to flow to the motors. And so the L298 chip is really the heart and soul of the, of the uh, motor controller. So uh, it, it can only go in in one direction. And uh, when you put the L298 chip in, you want to make sure all the leads stick through an even amount. And so what I like to do is put something under the uh, other side of the motor controller just to make sure that the uh, pins are all coming through evenly. Um, and so it also makes it a little easier to solder to. And again, we're just soldering right to the, to the, to the uh, solder pads, heating the solder pads and connecting everything. All right, so we're double checking to make sure there are no shorts and that all the solder connections look solid and are and are good, and it looks like they are. So that's a that's a good sign, and you can see there are no places where the solder has uh, gone and connected across. And then you can see the top of the board; all the components are sitting flush, and they're in their correct locations. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's our L298 motor controller that we're going to use to drive the motors on our Bitsybot.